Hey everyone, it's Lloyd and Lloyd is cooking again and I've been really in the mood for deli and one of the things that makes deli deli, especially if you're like me and you're from New York, it's rye bread, right? I mean, a nice sandwich on some really good New York style rye bread, I'm telling you, it doesn't get any better than that. Um, what makes New York rye bread different from other rye breads? The rye bread from New York, that outside crust, you get a really nice um, hard crust, golden brown, nice brown on the outside, um, but the inside is soft and it's kind of on the dense side. It, it's not, you know, like white bread, you know, all soft and, and everything. Um, that's not New York deli bread. The New York deli bread um, is, like I said, um, it's soft in this inside, but it has, it's kind of dense. Um, and that crust, though, you got to have that crust on there. Those of you that come from back east from New York, you all know what I'm talking about um, when it comes like that. So I live in Arizona, and let me tell you something. There is no way that um, you can get really good New York rye bread. So I figured, well, you know what? I'm gonna have to do it myself, all right? And I looked and I looked, I looked for recipes and I experimented, I tried and finally, poof, there it was. Um, so um, New York style, Jewish, seeded, of course, um, rye bread, all right? So um, let's get ready to cook, all right? Okay, so let's talk about um, what do I need to make a good New York rye bread? Well, flour, right? Um, bread flour, you're going to need that, a good bread flour. But you're also going to need rye flour. Now, there are a lot of different varieties of rye flour. And so I want to show you the, I use, I, I blend two different kinds. You don't have to do it. You can go with just straight one kind or another kind. But this is what I do. All right, so there is, let's see if we can see it through. There you can. All right, so this is whole grain rye flour, stone ground. All right, this kind, um, what I like about it, is that it's a very coarse flour. So I want to show it to you here. All right. So it's a very coarse kind of a flour. I really don't know if you could read. There we go. All right. You see that? Um, you can actually see the little pieces of flour in there. All right. So that is um, the stone ground coarse um, flour, all right? Um, it's called um, stone ground whole grain. So it means the whole grain is in it. And that provides it within that. It's going to give you um, a nice bite um, to it. Nutritionally, you know, it's really good for you. Um, so, you know, you want to do that. Um, all right. So we have that. And then I like using with it this is just dark rye flour i got this on amazon this is and i'll show it to you um there it is this is a very fine almost like cake flour you know a very very fine ground um rye so between um the coarse um, flour, all right, the whole grain, and then the um, the dark rye. The dark rye is going to give you that real intense rye flavor that I'm looking for, so it adds that to it, but it also helps to um, bring on some of that softness that I want. Um, the other rye, again, gives you more of a bite, helps with a little bit of denseness of it. I just like the combination of the two, all right. Um, I look at it as um, the um, whole grain, the coarser one. That reminds me of like um, West Coast beach sand, you know? And uh, the dark rye reminds me of like the East Coast 
beach, that like soft, beautiful, can you tell which one I like better? Um, sand of the East Coast. Um, so it's like East meets West. Anyway, so we're gonna need uh, that. How much of it? We're going to need um, two cups of rye flour. So I have one cup of the um, whole grain and one cup of the dark. That makes my two, all right? We're gonna need two cups of the um, bread flour, all right? We're going to need yeast, right? Um, we're going to need, um, what was that again with the yeast? Oh, two and a half teaspoons of instant yeast. Instant or pasteurized yeast. Pasteurized yeast, all right? Um, you're going to need um, water, right? One and three quarter cups of water. And, um, you know, I know recipes again tell you warmish water, you know, as long as it's not cold water, ice cold water, I don't know if you're um, like me right now in Arizona, it's gonna be 103 out there. It's cooling off a little bit today. 103, um, I ain't getting cool water out of my tap. I don't care. It's just not happening, all right? Um, but in fact, I had a, on cold, um, pour it and then leave it out here so it could cool down. <laughs> my cold water could cool down within the air temperature of things. The pipes get really hot. Um, I'm going to need sugar, one and a half teaspoons of sugar. Um, you're going to need, again, this is a seeded rye. This is optional. If you don't like seeded rye, Bhatti is not a, the biggest fan of it, but I'm cooking and I'm the one who likes it. So, but what I've done, uh, you're gonna want uh, caraway, whole caraway seeds, um, is I've reduced the amount that I was putting in it. She just couldn't even eat the bread. She's got a delicate palate. Um, and so she doesn't like that strong flavor of the caraway. Um, so I greatly reduce um, it down. Um, we'll get into that, but anyway, you can play with that or not put it in at all. That, that's fine. All right. Um, salt, uh, one and a half teaspoons table salt, not kosher salt, all right? Um, table salt, all right? With that, um, you're gonna need an egg white and you're gonna need two tablespoons of um, a vegetable oil. Stick with like a vegetable oil, canola oil, grapeseed oil, that kind of a thing, all right? All right, so, ready? All right, we're gonna start to bake. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna take our water. Now remember, this is, um, I've done this through experimentation um, and watching videos and baking shows and I have found Although no instructions to ever tell you to do it this way, I'm telling you. Start with your water and put it in your mixer bowl. All right, got that. Gonna reconnoiter my camera here for a second. I want you guys to be able to see what she doing. There we go. All right. Okay. So. I have in here my one and three quarters of oil. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to this, all right? Um, I wanna take a look at my notes. I wanna make sure I'm doing this right. Uh, one cup of my rye flour. You know, if, you, if you're if you using just one type, then put one cup. If you're splitting it between two different types, like I am, doesn't matter which one you start with, they're all gonna go into the pool if at some point all right, so I'm gonna start with my whole grain. I don't know why, I just decided, all right? And I'm putting that um, in. And I'm putting in one cup of my um, bread flour. Yes, I, I pre-measured everything, all right? Um, all right, and then I'm gonna add the yeast, oil, and the sugar, all right? So here I have my yeast and my sugar, okay? So that goes in. 
and I'm going to need my oil. Uh, two tablespoons. I'm using a canola. That's what I get. All right, but like I said, you could use any kind you want, so I'm putting in my two tablespoons. That's a one. That's a two. All right, so I have my one and three quarter cups of water. I have um, one cup of my rye flour. I have one cup of my all-purpose all flour. Um, I have um, my yeast, my oil, and my sugar. All right, and so we're going to put this onto uh, my stand mixer. Like I, say, I, I use a KitchenAid. Um, it's what was on sale when I wanted to get it. Batya got it for me. It's been quite a few years now. Um, all right, and so I'm gonna get this thing going. So, that's what she looks like. And I'm going to kick it up now. I always start on a slow so that the flour doesn't get all run all over the place. So I started on the one, now I'm at the two. And it's all coming together. All right, so you see it's all coming together. Now, looking very nice. So at this point now, I can add my other cup of flour. All right. So I found when I go to add flour in at one point, um, what was happening was I try to put it in. I get it all over the place. You know. Um, sometimes when I went to um, put it in, it would actually catch what my cup measure would catch on the hook as it's going around and it would just seize up, you know, because it would jam into that thing. Um, so um, I, I didn't like that. So I got myself, what are these? What's this? All right, so this is so cool. And this really just makes a big difference. And what it does is it just fits right onto the side. There it is. Right on the side of the bowl. And then when I'm going to add like my flour, I use this. All right? And so I am able to just take it and use this to kind of pour it in. And what it helps me do, it kind of falls in nicely, not as just one big lump. It kind of helps it to fall in more gently. So that's my all per uh, not my all purpose, my bread flour that's all in there. That's my second cup of that. And I have my second cup now of my rye. That's also going to go in. a very thick um, dough. Um, your, your mix is going to work at this. I'm just telling you. Alright, so expect that. Alright, so that went in and that went in. Alright, now that everything's mixed in and happy, 
Notice I didn't add my salt yet. Remember, all right, yeast hates salt. But now that we have it all mixed in with the flour and all that, we can now go ahead and add the salt. So I'm adding my salt now. All right. All right. So, what's going to happen now, again, you can see it's all coming together. It's starting to lift away from the bowl and all that. All right? We need to give this a little help. I'm kicking it up to the next number, which is a four. But I did want to show you something because it's something that you got to deal with. Remember with bread, there are um, elements to deal with. The heat, the humidity, all this stuff. And it affects the bread. Um, and so, what I, here's what I want you to see. All right? The dough that is mixing um, is becoming... Right, it's becoming like a puddle of mud. Okay, that is definitely not what we want. So when this happens, you need to add, start adding a little more flour. Right, so I'm gonna start with my bread flour. I'm going to start, I'm going to put in a quarter of a cup. Let's see what that does. Now you got to wait when you do that and give it a chance to incorporate that flour in there. And it's going to take a little while. As you can see, as it's going, it's looking less and less muddy. It's getting pulled together. It's coming into a ball. But you gotta wait, because what'll happen is possibly, possibly what's going to, oh, look at that. Possibly what's gonna happen is that it'll look like it's coming together, and then as it's working, all of a sudden it just starts to puddle again, which says, no, I need more flour in there, all right? But let's take a look, see what it looks like, all right? Don't be, don't be too quick with this. You know, give it some time. Um, but if we look, see, whoa. see how it's all pulled away now, coming together as a ball? Yeah, that quarter cup looks like it did it. All right. So, again, we're just going to let this go now for, until we've got that full um, eight minutes. Eight to ten, you know. Um, and then we'll come back, all right? So I'll see you in a little bit. All right, so we have about one more minute. Um, until it's been going eight minutes. 
So now's when, if you're going to, about that one minute mark, is to add those caraway seeds. Now, like I had said, um, Barfi is not a big fan of the caraway seed. So I, you know, I put just about a teaspoon, a teaspoon and a half of caraway. Um, that way it gives me a, a good piece. So what you do is, you, while it's going in, now you can see it looking great. I put it down back to a two from the four. I've slowed it down. And now I'm just gonna slowly begin to add my caraway seeds to that. And just let that last minute of, of kneading and everything kind of incorporate those seeds um, in there. Okay, and now we just have to wait for our time to run out. We'll be back in a moment. Okay, we're at eight minutes, coming on around nine minutes of it, all right? Um, I put it back up to that level four once my seeds are all incorporated, give it one last good jolt. You can see it's all cleared away, all right? So, <laughs> let's stop it. Bring it down. And what we want to do is we want to see it's tacky, all right, and yet, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's good. You want it slightly on that tacky side, all right, this one. All right, so I'm going to take this off. Okay, and um, we're going to take this dough, got the hook off, and we're going to transfer this now, just like we've done with all the other breads that we've made together, um, into a container that we are going to um, oil. Use the same oil you used um, in the dough itself. This is my um, canola. You know, about, I don't know, a, a teaspoon and a half, two teaspoons worth. All right. And you want to take it and you want to make sure you're getting it all around the sides of your container really good. Okay. Get it on your hands and that's good. Oil's good for the hands, right? But it also will help when we're trying to get everything out. So, we have that, we have that. All right, also, and remember, all right, this little silicone scraper, it's, it's really bad. Okay, but, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use my scraper. And I'm going to use it, and I'm just going to kind of scrape, use the scraper to move it along out of the bowl. I'm left-handed, you know, I don't know why that makes a difference and when you're trying to do things, but just makes the world just a little more difficult. It's a very interesting thing. Alright. Anyway, let's get this out there. There we go. That came out really nice. Alright, so when you look at it, alright, this is again, it's soft, it's pliable. Um, if you've made my other breads, the difference you will find in just the feel of it is you can feel that coarseness of the um, you're gonna feel the coarseness of that whole grain, whole, um, what's it called again? 
um, yeah, whole grain rye. You're gonna feel that, you can feel the bits. It's almost like uh, a sandpaper almost kind of feel-ish. All right, anyway, so I'm put making this into a ball with my hands, all right? And I'm gonna now put it, okay, into my container, okay? Put it in, move it around a little, then flip it over so that we get that grease side up. Again, why do we do that? Because it, it helps to prevent um, the, that surface from becoming dried out and cracky and get like a skin over it that's not, not good. All right, so I have that, all right, I have that, and I'm gonna put my cover on it. And this baby's got to rise, all right? Um, we're gonna give it about an hour and a half or so. <laughs> we're gonna give it about an hour and a half to um, rise. But remember, all right, that number, hour and a half, hour, hour and a half, is, I don't know, it, you know, it's an estimate of things. This is a living thing now. Um, so it can, depending on, again, on the temperature of your house and all that, um, this, you know, can take an hour, and an hour I'll go, oh, it's done. I'm looking for it to double, all right? So I'm gonna look for it to be um, somewhere around just above that two quart, above the two quart, okay, Mark, um, on mine. But you want it to look about double, all right? If, um, so it could take an hour, it could take an hour and a half, it could take two hours, all right? Um, maybe even up to three. I have had to wait like up to three hours um, in the past. Um, I don't know, but when it's 105 out there and it's fairly warm in here, I probably won't have to wait more than maybe an hour, an hour and a half because of just the heat here, all right? But do not put it like into your stove and put it on like a proof setting or don't push it, don't make it do its thing. Leave it alone, put it aside somewhere um, in your home, in your kitchen or in another room somewhere, all right? And just leave it. Go do something, go swim some laps, read a book, do some yoga, do some meditation, all right? Back in the rug. I don't care, but um, do something. You know, you have now an hour and a half, all right, to do it. All right, so I'm gonna go put this aside um, and we will um, be back in about an hour and a half, an hour, an hour and a half, I'll come back and we'll see where we're at with this. All right, see you in a little bit, bye. All right, so, um, we're making rye bread, and we went ahead and we measured everything out. We put it in a mixer, we mix it up. We put it into a, an oil container to rise. That's what we've been waiting for. Set the timer for an hour, and I've been checking it. Like I said, I'm living in Arizona. It's about 103 out there. It's upper, um, like 77, 78 here in the house. That's where we keep it. Um, and anyway, um, and so I've been checking it. Again, remember, the temperature of the house and everything else will influence how quickly it will rise. All right, so in actuality, I've got 11 more. So it's been going about 50, about 50 minutes. So it's under an hour. And yet, um, here is my... Here is our dough. So if you remember, when I first put it in, it was just above the one liter mark. And so now it's just above the two liter mark and that's double in size. You don't wanna let it rise too much. Again, if you make it, if you let it rise too much, what's going to happen is 
all the structures of the glutens and everything um, will become too weak to support the dough. So that so that's where we're where we are at right now. Is I I'm feeling like it's risen enough. I don't want to over rise it. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to put, um, we're going to go to the next step of this. And the next step is going to be to take it out, shape it, all right, and into a loaf or two loaves. And that's going to be one of the things you're going to have to be thinking about is, all right, am I going to want one loaf or am I going to want two loaves of here? I'm thinking this time I want, I'm going to go for one loaf. All right, but I've made two loaves. Is just smaller loaves, too small. But I think I'm gonna go for a bigger loaf this time. All right, I'm going to get my notes up here. All right. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So here we go. You, know, you could just you can smell the smell is awesome. Anyway, so I'm gonna take it out onto a board. Okay. So here's what we do. You're either now gonna cut it in half, weigh it, please, if you have your scale, all right? Please, if you don't have one, go get yourself a food scale so you can weigh these things out. It, it makes a difference, but if not, and you wanna go ahead and eyeball it and kind of feel it, go for it, all right? So here's what you do. Once you have, whether you have two or one, if you have two, you're going to go ahead and you're going to put one aside and work with the one and then work with the other. Using your fingers, all right, you start to press this down. And what we want to do is form kind of like a rectangle. Okay. No need for a rolling pin or anything like that. See how nice this is going? And just stretching out. going to blow your mind all right but ready you're going to take the first the top of your rectangle the two ends all right remember when you had to make a paper airplane all right first thing you do is you fold it right to make that paper aerial plane that so that's the first thing you do I know weird right hang in there with me all right so once you have that now we're gonna start starting at the point we're gonna start to roll it into a roll all right <clears throat> so you you roll and you roll now here's the thing as you're rolling, I'm going to turn so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. You roll, and then you're going to do a little, like, pitch, a press down. Kind of seal it. Then you go and roll, press it down, pitch. See that? Roll, press it down. Okay? Roll. Press it down, kind of helping it to kind of make contact and it's not gonna really stick, but it's gonna make contact with, uh, with it. You wanna keep your rolls tight, okay? Keep it tight and press, okay? See that? And so we just keep on doing that. Roll, keep the roll tight, press. Roll, 
on, press. So we've got this roll, right? All right, hang in there. So what you want to do is you want to get the seam, come up to the seam, and now you want to start to pinch. And you want to start kind of getting that seam sticking down into your loaf, okay? All right, come all the way around. All right, now. You have this like weird, right? Ends, these weird ends, right? What do I do with my weird ends? You're gonna wonder, okay? Here you go, all right? You're gonna take your knuckle. You're gonna push this in. See that? Push it in. And pinch the seam. Okay? Right. Other side, All right? Take your knuckle, push it in. See that? And the seam. Now you want to go, and you're going to roll it over, and you're going to kind of make sure all of these seams. Now you're going to work all the seams, so all the seams are on the same side here. All right. So I'm kind of pinching and I'm smoothing it out, pinching, getting all my seams down. Okay, get that going, give it a nice a little roll. Alright, and watch you wind up with what you should wind up with, right, seam is down now, is what will look like a nice roll, all right, like that. It is um, taunt, is that the word? You know, it's, it's pulled, it looks pulled and tight and even, all right? So I wanna show you here, I got a little bit of a of a problem there. I'm just going to go ahead and fix it. That's all. Get that smoothed out there. All right. So I really want the whole thing to be nice and that down. So once I have that, all right, I'm going to take this and I'm going to transfer it to a parchment lined cookie sheet. So. I was just getting ready to count down that last minute that I've been waiting for. Okay. Alright, so it's some parchment. I'm gonna take my loaf now and I'm gonna put it. See how you can't you can barely see um, where the seam was? Okay, that's kind of what you're wanting. You're gonna take this and you're gonna bring it on to your pan. You want, and this way you want to make sure, you know, it's nice and straight, get her straight. All right. And then we're going to take it and we're going to um, cover it. Again, I like covering it with a clean um, towel. So take a nice clean towel. And again, this is to keep air from getting on it, all right, so it doesn't, it's, it prevents it from getting that filmy, crusty, dried out on the top. And I like going ahead and just bringing this down here, all right, and what we want, the reason why you wanted that nice tight roll and, and that tight um, look of it, you know, you want it all taut, um, is because that's gonna help it to rise up and maintain its structure and not just kind of um, rise outward. 
So we, we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave this now uh, for, um, for about 45 minutes until it's double, all right? So we want it to be about double that size. We want it risen up. We want it about double in size. Again, this is where you're going to have to watch, just like before, you know, how much time. I'm just going to leave this here. Like I said, it's about 77 degrees or so, 78 degrees in the house right now. Um, I'm going to think that in about 45 minutes, it's probably going to look the way I want it to look. But we'll find out. So I'll see you in about 45 minutes-ish, and we'll take a look, see what we got. Okay, so here's where we're at. Um, we're making a rye bread and we formed it into the loaf and we set it aside for it to to rise we wanted it to double and rise so I'm making one big loaf but um, I'm right now at about um, I had set my timer for 50 minutes for an hour um, to rise but I think I'm ready and we're about 50 55 minutes so I wanted to show you what this will look what it looks like now. Look at that. Okay. So here's what we need to do next. Now so it's really important when we're doing this um, that we don't let it rise too much. Again, if we let it rise too much, what happens is it starts looking wonky, you know, lose its shape. That means its structural integrity is not good. That means when we put it in the oven and it's gonna have that um, spring that happens when you put it in the oven, the yeast in there will do its final activation from the heat in the oven and it'll push and it'll spring and it'll come even bigger than what it is. And if we don't, um, if we're not careful, and we let it um, rise too much, um, it won't have the integrity of structure to um, be able to manage that spring, and it will, all right, hopefully that won't happen. It has happened, all right? So what we need to do next is a couple of things. One, we need to score what's called score the bread. That means putting some um, cuts into it, all right? You can use a very sharp, and I emphasize that, very sharp um, serrated blade um, to do that. Or you can buy this. It's called, I think I'm pronouncing, I'll pronounce right, a, a lame or a lamb, L-A-M-E. And it is, a, it's a tool for scoring bread. It's a double-edged blade that you can replace the blades it's this one I really like. It's got a good weight to it, all right? So when I'm scoring, I don't have to press down. I just let the natural weight of, the, of this lame to um, do the work for me. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make, now if I had cut it in half, I would put maybe about three cuts in it. Um, because I made one big long one, I'm gonna put four to six, all right, cuts. And what you want to do is you want to kind of go diagonal. You don't want to press down. You don't want to make a deep cut. You want your cut to be about a quarter to half an inch deep. Okay. So again, I like letting the blade kind of do the work for me. It's one, two. You really want your blade to be a sharp one. Three, and yeah, we'll do four and four, okay? So there we are, I've scored it. All right, now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take, I have an egg wash here, it's just egg white, not the yolk, the egg white, and about a teaspoon of water. You can use milk, all right? If you want, I'm using water. Um, and we're just gonna lightly brush, all right? Why are we doing this? Well, the egg white is going to help create a really nice, that sheen that we like, that we go to a New York deli and they have their bread and they have that beautiful brown sheen. Well, this is how they're getting that on there. 
Alright, so I'm just gonna kind of take care of that. Oh, that's my timer saying that my bread is good as far as it's rising. Let me turn that off. Alright, so I also, um, I've turned my oven on and I'm having it go to um, 450 degrees to start. I am going to um, lower it down to 400 degrees after it's been in for about 15 minutes. All right, but right now, I'm not gonna do that. So I want this, you know, to have a nice even coating on it. Now, the scoring, there is a purpose, reason why you score, all right? It's not just for aesthetics. Um, in the old days, um, bakeries, the scoring, part of the reason they would score is when they would cook their, um, their breads in these wood ovens and stuff, they all came out brown. I mean, so if you just looked at them, it was hard to tell what bread was what? Was this a rye bread? Was this a pumpernickel bread? You know, was what, what, what kind of bread is it? And so one of the ways that they identified their breads, when you went in and said, I want a seeded rye, the, the person could turn around and look, and based on how it was scored, they would know what bread it is. And each different type of bread was scored a different way. All right, that was one reason. But there is another reason. And the other reason is, that we score our bread because when we put it in the oven, it's gonna have that final spring, all right? Whatever is the weakest point in our bread, that part in that spring is gonna blow out. And so the scoring, what it does is it creates natural weak points in the bread so that when it does do its final spring there, um, it in, helps to ensure, no guarantees, but it helps to ensure that your rise will be even and your bread will look beautiful. All right, so this is all done. I have a nice even of my fat. There's one more thing that we're gonna need before we put this in the oven, all right? And that is some ice, all right? So what I'm gonna get, I'm gonna want about five or six cubes or so. Ah, it's water. Make sure it's set on um, ice before you do that. There we go. Now I'm going to have ice. All right. So um, I have my my machine makes um, these little tiny ices. So I put a bit more than three or four. But you know. Now what am I going to do with this? All right. I'm about to put this into my oven. When I'm at that point, I'm gonna also throw ice into the bottom of my oven. It's gonna create steam. So I'm gonna throw the ice in and quickly close that door. It's gonna create steam. That steam is gonna create that beautiful, hard um, crust that we love to see on our New York style um, rye bread. All right, now, if you have an old oven where the element is like exposed, First of all, you need a new oven. <laughs> Second of all, um, if you have that, you can't throw ice just in there. So take a pan while your oven is heating up, have the pan just under the, um, the rack that this is gonna go on. And when you, put your, um, when you put your bread in, throw the ice into that hot pan, all right? But be careful if you do that, because there's a chance it's gonna crackle and spattle and you know, you wanna be careful, so you wanna do it and get that door closed and just, just be careful, all right? So, let's get our bread into our oven. have a, a 
balloon phenomenon, it kind of got in my way. But anyway, this goes in, my ice goes in, and I close it. And I'm gonna set my oven for 15 minutes. My timer. So, that ice is melting, it's creating steam, um, it's in there for 15 minutes, it's going to create that initial spring there. At the end of 15 minutes, I'm going to go, I'm going to rotate my um, pan, my loaf, all right, and set it for about another 10. Now, these are approximate times. Um, every oven is different. It's hard, you know, for me to give you an, an exact time. This is where you just have to be mindful, all right? So you're going to um, go ahead and give it 15 minutes, turn it, give it another 10, approximately. But in that last 10, um, you know, use your oven light and whatever. You don't want to keep on opening up that oven. That, that throws the heat off. You don't want to do that. Um, but you want to go ahead and double and check to make sure it's getting that nice golden brown but you don't want to burn it so that's kind of what we're we're looking for oh the rack I should tell you that the rack is on the um, the lower two-thirds position so one below half how about that all right um, so that's where you want it to be all right and so that's in there cooking um, I'm going to cook it for, for 15, I'm going to rotate, cook it for approximately another 10. Again, how do I know when it's done? Well, there are two methods. One is to knock, to sound hollow. Um, the other way is use a, a thermometer and um, just kind of put it in there. And you want somewhere around 190 to 200. Okay, somewhere in that neighborhood is bread stuff. All right, so we'll see what happens. I'll see you in about 25 minutes. All right, we'll see how this comes out. Okay, so we're making rye bread again. Um, it's been in the oven, ready to come out. Keeping our fingers crossed with it. Remember, we put it in a 450 degree oven, um, 15 minutes, spun it, and turned it around inside the um, the oven and then reduced it down to 400, reset it to 400 degrees for another 10 minutes, exactly what happened. And so let's see what we got here. Oh boy. Now remember, we put in that, um, the ice cubes to help um, steam it, to give it that nice, um, crust out here all right all right take a look at that that is one beautiful rye bread is it done you better believe it's done the test is that not test all right so let's get it you want to get it onto your cooling rack See that bottom also is a beautiful, all right? Remember we slashed it so that it would hold its integrity um, and all, and it just looks beautiful. Don't you wanna just kind of cut into it and try it now? You can't, I can't. You have to let it rest, all right? This has been, you know, its internal temperature is somewhere between 190 and 200 degrees. Um, and so it's still cooking. Right now, that internal temperature, there's cooking going on inside this thing. Taking it out, just stop the outside part from cooking because we don't want it to burn. So we have to let this rest, all right? We have to let it rest half an hour or so you know you really want it to give it some time to settle 
All right, if we were to just chop into it now, all the steam would start coming out of it. It would, um, it would, it would ruin what you know you just took a long time. So um, you'll have to trust me. It's good. All right. Um, so anyway, there it is, a beautiful, beautiful New York deli style rye bread fit for, um, <laughs> God, I'm having some trouble here, fit for um, a pastrami sandwich, all right, fit for a Reuben, fit for for a nice roast beef. I'm gonna gross some of you out, but it really is one of my favorite sandwiches. Beef tongue, New York boy, Jewish. We love our beef tongue. Uh, but, uh, you know, anything like that on it. But really, um, a nice pastrami or corned beef sandwich with some um, sauerkraut on it if you want. The New Yorker. All right, if you've never had a New Yorker, all right, a New Yorker is um, pastrami or corned beef. I prefer pastrami on rye, Jewish rye, all right, um, with Thousand Island dressing um, and coleslaw. New Yorker. And it's not like a sandwich. You pile that baby up with that pastrami. Come on, you know? Um, at any rate, I hope that um, you found this interesting, picked up a few tips and techniques. Um, go ahead, do it, all right? You'll be okay, all right? Just follow along with what I did, and you will be looking at one of these in your home, all right? So, um, that's it um, for, this, um, for this lesson, all right? And, you know, just um, stay tuned because you know, it's not going to be very long before Lloyd Cooks. See you back later. Bye.